Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Formula Pi testing round one. This is the third testing round, obviously cunningly labelled testing round one. Um, last week we did testing round zero and testing round 0. 0, ugh, 0. 0.5. Um, oh, my words aren't even working. I've just finished eating a packet of crisps, so I'm probably not talking straight yet. But yeah, we did we did two last week, 0 and 0. 0.5. Um, they went really, really well. So this week we are doing testing round one. We're hoping to get through all of the competitors in one session tonight. Uh, we're hoping to do everything we possibly can. Um, that is, bar any minor upsets like we had last week. Um, so fingers crossed, hopefully, we'll all go nice and smoothly. Um, I've got the chat open so I can see what you're saying. So hello to everybody if you're in the chat. Um, and I guess we're just waiting to get set up with the first robot tonight. Um, format's the same as last week. We're going to start with the Grand Pi uh, competitors who are going to go first. Uh, we've got five robots doing that tonight. Um, and then we'll move on to the Monster Ball class and we'll get them underway too. Um, it's going to be really good, hopefully. Fingers crossed. And we'll get over all the issues we had last week. We've got all the... Oh, my mobile phone's still on. I can hear that bit, 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 bit on the microphone. Um, we are hoping... I'm going to switch this off. God, that's really bad of me. Dreadful, terrible Tufty. Right, there we go. It's off now. So there we go. My phone's off. We can stop the bit, 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 bit noise. So uh, good evening. I can see some people have joined us in the chat. Hi, Mike. Hi, George. Uh, good to see you both. Um, and we're hoping to get underway any minute. I'm not sure where Aaron and Tim are. I'm pretty sure they're upstairs because they've left this room. Um, they're now upstairs on track, waiting to go. Fingers crossed. Um, I'll just radio up to see if I can find out what's going on. Can we have the first robot, please? And silence from upstairs. Uh, they are... Oh, no, there's Aaron. I can see him. He's just arrived on screen. So Aaron is going to set up the first robot for tonight. And whilst he does that, I'm going to quickly sneak over to the spin view to introduce you to the first competitor tonight, who is, for the second week running, uh, Autologic. Robot 77 is powered. There we go. As you've heard, just heard, they're powering up and they're getting ready to go. So Autologic are an engine... Uh, an engine analysis company from Wheatley in Oxfordshire, a um, lovely part of the world. And uh, as we can see, there's an entire fleet of people in the team, although I've been told a little secret about the team, which I may share with you later. Um, and we'll see how we go. But they are on tonight for the second time. Did really well for last week. Um, looking really good. Had some good lines and stuff. So hopefully, fingers crossed, they'll do well tonight again and we'll be good to see them out running again. Um, they're a team uh, of lots of different engineers that are all going to have a go at this over the time. Uh, mainly run by Gareth, I believe. Um, I think he was the one who I was talking to last week on the chat. Um, so hopefully, it all will go well this week. I've just realised, really badly organised tonight, because I'm sort of halfway through eating a packet of crisps. Um, my keyboard's all in the wrong place, and everything's all mixed up. So uh, hopefully, I'll find everything in a bit. <laughs> and hopefully the microphone, hopefully you can all hear me okay. Uh, Tim's come down. Tim's in the, Tim's in the room. Thank you. I'll try and do that. I will try and remember, and hopefully tonight we'll have less fluffing up from here, and uh, everything will go smoothly. I'm hoping. Fingers crossed. Good luck. <laughs> Good, good. Is that for me or for the competitors? <laughs> good luck to everyone, of course. Yes. Okay. Okay. So good luck to everybody. Uh, Swindus is asking. Hello, Swindus. Good evening. Um, do you have more than two monster borgs now? Three. <laughs> we've got three. We're up to three. So we've we've had a, a, a feverish building session. Uh, we've had some of the parts arrive for the Kickstarter. So Tim has put some together um, just to make sure that they're all right for assembly. Um, we should have uh, five. We'll, we'll definitely have five. We'll probably have ten for the first race, just so we've got a few spares. Yeah. Two runs. Good. That sort of thing. So we, we've uh, uh, up to fifteen. Up to fifteen. Okay, so we we do have enough in now. Yeah. So we are. I think we're pretty close to doing the Kickstarter as well, now, aren't we? Uh, well, the parts are coming in. We're still getting there. There's, okay. uh, there's still a lot of parts on order waiting right. to come in. Uh, the slower the delivery is, the uh, the better it is for us. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it so will catch take up. a little bit of time. Yeah. yeah. Well, we haven't forgotten you. No, we haven't. We should turn out an update. That's one of your things to do. We, That's we on your should. list. Yes, we have been quite busy. Yeah. Um, so. I think we must be almost at two minutes. Are you staying down here now? Oh, I should probably get I was about to say, do you not have jobs to do? Have you not got robots Actually, to herd? I, I'm fairly organised. I don't really have many jobs for the first eight runs. Oh, so. well. Um, so, let's see. 
Okay, Mike is saying, put all 15 on the track and let them have at it. I totally want to do that. So he said, put put all 15 on the track and let them have at it. I want that. Let's do that. Um, we should just do mass robot demolition derby. End of season final should be just everyone. Yeah, let's do it at the end. That's yeah, good. there we can't. Just every competitor we've had, just put them on the track all at the same time. That's a good idea. Okay. <laughs> I think it's a great idea. We should definitely do that. <laughs> So, I think, I guess the two minutes is gone. Is Aaron okay up there, unattended? Uh, Do I need to radio? Because you're not we up there. Radio okay. So, have we hit the two minutes yet, please? Just double checking. Yeah, we're ready for the start lights whenever you are. Well, I'm ready to go. Let's, let's as Mike said, have at it. <laughs> uh, and, and get on with this. So, here we go. So the Autologic team, first up tonight, let's see how their two minutes goes. And we've got green light, red light, green light, and on the second green light, they should set off. And away they go, so a clean start there for Autologic. Coming up to the first corner, a little bit of movement there. A little bit of a wide line. So definitely, there's quite a lot of movement there, but still staying wide, that could fare well in the racing to keep out of trouble when everybody goes into the close lines. This is looking good, in through the S's. Nice neat line there. Let's see what the time is. I've got my microphone in front of the time, which really isn't very clever in terms of setup from me. But let's see. So 20, was it 25 seconds is the record? 24 seconds is the record? 28-1. That's a pretty respectable first lap. That's good considering the start. So if they can sneak under 28 seconds for their second lap, then they're doing very, very well. There's always a little bit of a delay when the start lights go, just because the robots take a little bit of time to respond. Uh, there's about, I think it was 8 to 10 frames a second, Tim said, was the processing for these. So they're a little bit slower at processing, so they take off the line a little bit slower. But hopefully we should be looking good here for a 20 second, 27 second lap. Here we go. Oh, almost identical times. Look at that for consistency. Brilliant. That's even better. Consistency is even better. That's what we're looking for, really. Uh, if you can get consistent lap times, then you're doing really well. Um, so Gareth from Autologic, who was on the email shortly after testing last week, um, said that actually he's the only person on the team at the moment and he's hoping to get other people involved now they've got a bit of downtime between projects. Um, so that picture with the hundreds of people in, it is in fact a lie. 29.93, so there must be some wider lines in that lap there to just push the lap time up a little bit towards 30 seconds. Um, but yeah, he was saying, or this, this horde of people that he has in the picture, it's a lie. Uh, there will be, it's a stock photo, but I promised I'd keep it a secret. And nobody's listening, are they? Well, I'm here on my own, aren't I? Probably. Anyway, I hope you're listening, Gareth. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you're doing really well now. So this, this lap looks a little bit tighter than the previous one. So hopefully this will sneak back towards 28 seconds. Oh no, second lap consistent again. Robot 77, time is up. So that is... It. I need to press a button. I've forgotten which one it is. Let's hope it's that one. That'll do. And that's it. Race over for number 77. So good four laps there. Nice consistent times. Just creeping up a little bit. I mean, we expect creep with these little Yeti Borg robots because of the battery life. Um, but that's pretty respectable. There's some nice times there. So well done, Team Autologic. That is brilliant. Uh, so Aaron has collected the robots. He is the robot herder for this evening. Uh, oh, sorry, Gareth. He heard. He was listening. <laughs> you did really well though, well done, it's good work. Uh, so let's see, Aaron is going to set up the second robot and then we are going to introduce the next team once I've faffed about with Notepad++, which we all love because I get it wrong every week. Uh, I should keep this open, really. Robot 40 is powered. Ah, which means I have two minutes to introduce you to Robot 40 once I've sorted my stuff out and deleted some things and saved some things. Here we go. We will introduce Team 40, who are the next team up on the Grand Prix class. Uh, this is Paxo Parrot, who has a really beautiful top with a lovely parrot on. They're from Poole in the UK, uh, listing their experiences about 18 months plus coding experience, which is really, really good. Um, so it's nice to see sort of a, someone who's done a little bit of coding before. Um, and they're new to Formula Pi. Uh, they have no other relevant hobbies other than coding, which is obviously the most important one, let's face it. Um, and they said they learned to, how to program on a BBC back in the late 80s, just like me. I had a BBC Micro, so I'm, I'm down with the Micro team. So well done, Paxo Parrot, for getting up on the on Formula Pi. You were in the chat last week, and uh, we did we did chat briefly. Um, but now you've submitted some code, we can actually see you going in real. So that's really, really good. Um, lots of chat tonight. Hello, everyone. Um, 
Mike says, how do teams test out their bots? And I think everyone's answered. Oh, so everyone has answered. Um, and yes, the 3D spin view is just me being flash. I have a little button that I have to double click. And it spins round and shows the top in all of its glory because you can't really see them uh, on the cameras. They're a little bit uh, difficult to see, but the tops are incredible. Um, yeah, and the 3D spins is just for me to explain to people um, who they are because it's nice to know who we're seeing and nice to know who's kind of competing. So, yeah, uh, it is me being partly flash. I didn't write it, though, sadly. I can't claim that. Um, but that's what we do for each contestant. And, yeah, there's a simulator for people to test in between rounds to see how their code is going. Um, so they don't have to be on the track all the time. Um, also, it doesn't give people a, a preference if they're like a preferential treatment. If there is one driver who gets a lot of time actually on the physical track, that's going to give them an advantage, and then they end up being more prepared than others. So the simulator kind of levels the playing field in terms of prepping for this. Um, so yeah, that's all part of the the race thing. So everyone has a go. We are ready for the start lights. Well, there we go. Uh, Aaron has informed me that ready for start lights. So I need to reset the timer and then say, please start the light sequence. We'll go again for the second time. Green, red, green, and then go. So hopefully Pacto Parrot will get away well. Uh, hopefully they're in the chat later as well and catch up. Let's see. So green, red, green, and we're off. Good start there from Pacto Parrot. Sneaking through. Oh, going wide again, and then coming round into the corner. Oh, very tight line. Oh, just taking the wall there. Oh, ouch. That's a, that was a little bit too sharp there. I can see the tactic, but yeah. Oh, a bit sharp again. Uh, left a bit, left a bit. There we go, we're off into the S's. So, yeah, Paxo Parrot uh, lists their ages 40 something. Yeah, so shh, don't tell anyone. Um, <laughs> and they are new to Formula Pi. This is the first time they've entered. Um, and their strategy for winning the competition is initially take the corners wide and don't hit the wall or other Yetis if possible. Um, so, we've hit what? Taking the corners wide, that's pretty good. We're doing that. I can see that you, that code is working, definitely. But a couple of little wall contacts as we're going around. Um, but you've not hit the upside down, which is good. Because um, as, as we discovered last year, the upside down is really difficult, um, kind of scary, and you end up with your robot um, just just driving slightly differently when it's upside down, um, being slightly differently to turn. Um, and so, yeah, this is this is all right. 51 seconds, that's not, not great, but room for improvement. This lap looks a lot better. Less contact here, and we've definitely sorted ourselves out now. Uh, it's coming in around the last corner under the IQ audio sign there. So we're coming into the corner. And this is looking all right now. This is looking, we've settled down now. This is good. So second lap coming in for a 34.9. That's pretty good. That's getting better. Like I said last year, Enigma was the uh, lap record holders. And I've completely forgotten what it was. So I'm going to have to go and look that up. I think it was about 24, 25 seconds was the lap record with these particular robots. Um, and that was recorded in the Eliminators um, before the finals. So that was, you know, straightforward, fastest lap as you possibly can. Um, but Paxo Parrot looking like they're going around for a... Maybe they'll squeeze in this lap before Aaron shouts out time up. I'm very aware that could be soon. Do, 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 do. There we go, just creeping through. And I think that's probably going to be time for them any second now. Robot 40, time is up. So there we go. Uh, that's it for Paxo Parrot. Well done, Paxo Parrot. Uh, three laps in, so 51, 34, and 30. Getting better as we're going through the three laps, so that looks good. Whatever you were doing on lap three, that looks really good. Stick with that. Um, when you get the logs back later on, have a look at what you did there, and then uh, see see if you can do that every lap, because then you'll be up with the kind of average time that we're seeing for these ones. So I'm going to tip-tap about, because I can't remember off the top of my head what the lap record was. I think it was 25 seconds. So I'm going to go and find this out. Um, in the meantime, uh, Aaron is going to load up the next robot. I should probably sort out. I've already sorted out Notepad. I've done that autopiloted through that. Uh, let's have a sneaky peek. See if I can find it on the blog. Oh, I can't. Robot me head. Never mind. I think it's about 25 seconds. That sounds right in my head. Um, so that is the fastest lap, I think. We'll stick with that tonight. I'll make it so. Um, ISAS FTW's just joined us. Good evening. Uh, no, we haven't run 69 yet. Uh, 69 is due to run in about seven robots time, I think. So you, you are in plenty of time. Go make a cup of tea and uh, we'll see you in a bit. And that and that will be your, yours up in the Monster Ball class. But next up in the Yeti Ball class, we have another newbie, I think. Sorry, I just went away from the microphone then. That's bad form. 
do I have a sheet for this? No, I don't. I don't need a sheet for this. I know this. This is the IQ Audio team from Cricklade in the UK. Um, IQ Audio are one of our sponsors this year, and they very kindly uh, sponsored Formula Pi. They have lots of lovely audio add-ons for the Raspberry Pi, so go and check them out if you're interested in uh, DAX or anything along those lines that you want to do any sort of audio fanciness with your Raspberry Pi. Go and check them out. Uh, they're, they're a lovely team, and we love them lots. Um, and I, I should have caught up with you guys at Pi Party, but I'm not sure if I did. There was a lot that went on that weekend. Um, we were very busy. Um, but they did really well last week. Um, and, yeah, look, looking strong for this, I think. They're going to do really well. I seem to remember their times last last week were pretty good. Um, so hoping for a continuation. Ah, Adam has just corrected me. 24.2 seconds is the lap record. Thank you, Adam. Um, I knew it was somewhere around the 25 mark. Um, I just couldn't remember off the top of my head. I've, I've basically come into this week. I got to here really early, because I was obviously late last week with all the traffic and stuff that I was whinging about for the whole feed. Um, and this time I was really early. I was an hour and a half early and then did none of the things I was supposed to do before we went on live on YouTube. So I'm equally as unprepared. Um, but still a little more relaxed this week, not as wired as last week. Um, so yeah, that's... We are cool. ready for the start line. Okay, so now I can radio up to Aaron and we'll get the IQ Audio team underway. Uh, start the lights, please. So for those who don't know, I have a radio as well, um, so I can tell Aaron to get going. So there we go, see, like, by magic, uh, the lights are on, so here we go, red, and then green, oh sorry, hang on, I'm colourblind. <laughs> now I'm red. <laughs> I'm, see, I'm all over the place. Green, and go, and IQ Audio are off. Great, so they seem to be taking ooh, quite a sinusoidal path into the corner, but then favouring that wide line. seems like everybody's going for the wide line tonight. Maybe that's something that everybody else is doing. It seems like people are really coming wide into that first corner and then carving it up through the S's, taking a nice sweeping line before levelling out into Headbanger. Uh, this is Headbanger Corner, for those who are new. Uh, this is where, because it's got a low roof, we always bang our heads in that corner when we do anything. Um, and that's it, first like 28-1, pretty good, that's about an average time, nice to see. Uh, and then a better line coming in this time, a bit more sweeping, not as wobbly coming in there. So this could be a good lap. It's looking pretty smooth. Ooh, let's see how they're doing, coming into Headbanger. Underneath their own IQ Audio banner, there look, see, matching the robot lid perfectly. And coming across the line... Ooh, 26.96, nice! So that looks much better. Coming into the first corner there, their line was really tight and they were smooth through the S's. Um, that is looking really good. I'm, I'm pleased for them. It's a good time. So they're looking pretty good for the Yeti Ball class this year. Um, they seem to have the fastest lap times, I think, just. But their lines into the first corner could favour them going wide. But if everybody goes wide, then everybody's going to be in the same place and there's going to be a crash. Um, so maybe strategy, guys. Uh, 28 one, so that's a little slower. Um, I think we're a bit wobbly through the S's that time round, and this will surely be their last lap to fit in under the two minutes. Um, also, uh, it, sh it should probably be said that there is a time delay between Aaron upstairs and myself down here. So Aaron is seeing everything in real time. I'm seeing everything on the screens with a little bit of a delay. So when he says stop, the screen's probably about two or three seconds behind. So. Um, this is to help us with our editing and changing camera angles and stuff. Um, so yeah, that's why we've got a delay. So any second now, I'm expecting to hear... Robot 72, time is up. As if by magic. Uh, there he is. So that's it for IQ Audio. That is some good times there. Bit of a mixed bag. But the 26.9 is looking very promising. That's going down towards the, the sharp end of the competition, I think. And Aaron comes out to retrieve the robots. He is our resident robot herder. Um, it seems very calm when he collects the Yeti Borgs, um, but as you'll see when the Monster Borg comes out there's a little bit more running because they're a little bit quicker, um, which is really funny and <laughs> you'll see that come out a bit later on. So that was it, IQ Audio, great times there, looking fairly good and I'm going to delete my next bit so I can do the spin view for my next thing. So next up uh, we have I think another new competitor. So we've got lots of newbies in the Yeti Borg class which is really good, um, it's a great place to start for autonomous racing. Uh, really gives you a good idea of what's Robot going on. So there we go. Robot 71 is on the track. And we have a new competitor here. So Robot 71 is Bebop from Painted Post, New York. That sounds like a great town name. I love this. Um, and this is uh, a 
coding experience listed as being recently retired three weeks ago. Ah, yes, I do remember you from last time we had a talk about this. Um, so yeah, recently retired three weeks ago um, as a mechanical engineer at Corning Incorporated. And they've been interested in Python as a, a hobby, and they discovered it 17 years ago and have used it to write simple control scripts for their job doing mechanical engineering. Um, so decided to give Formula Pi a go as a retirement hobby. What a great idea. Um, so lovely to have you with us, Bebot. Uh, I'm sure it's mid-afternoon for New York at the moment, so yeah, I'm guessing that you may be able to watch this live. Um, I'm always a bit shady about America, like obviously know where New York is. Um, but some of the other places I'm not so sure about, so I'm always kind of confused as to what sort of time of day it is. Um, but it's great. We've got a real international affair again tonight. Um, and I'm actually very excited about one of the competitors that's coming up a bit later, because um, they live near one of my favourite places in Australia, and I'm very excited. But we'll, we'll come to that later. <laughs> Back to Bebot, obviously. Um, seem to remember the times were okay last week. Um, I should have rewatched the races before I got here and made some notes, which is bad form of me. Um, I promise I'll be better for the real racing. Uh, but I'm assuming the two minutes is nearly up. We're kind of ready to go. So, I'm just going to hang around for a bit. Uh, Swindus has just made an observation saying, if everybody is taking the first corner wide, then I'm changing my code, shoot up the inside and take it tight. Yeah, it's for the Yetis, it seems to be uh, everyone is taking it quite wide. Um, I don't know if that is just how the code is or whether that's how everyone is choosing to do it um, but yeah with the monsters it'll be interesting we to see if they do the same the so there we go Aaron is letting me know uh, that we can get going so start light sequence please and we'll get underway with Bebot oh dropping my radio about so here we go green light then red light then green light and then we'll be away you can see Tim loitering in the background over there with intent and Bebot is away Great start. Oh, a little bit twitchy on the straight there. Really tracking that green line, but keeping it fairly midline. That's good. But the wobble kind of slows them down. Uh, but that's it. They've got a good line coming through the S's now. This is looking actually quite good through the S's. For keeping it fairly mid, but that's great. That's a good line to take to start. And coming out of headbanger now into the final straight. We'll see what their first lap time is. 29.1, so fairly similar to IQ Audio that went previously. Um, but this means that the racing is going to be fairly consistent. If everybody's got very similar times, this is going to be very tight when it comes to the actual racing. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see who comes out on top. I think the, the Yeti board class this year is a lot, seems a lot closer than it was last year. Um, it seems like a lot of people have really benefited from, I think we used Enigma's code for the base code this year. Um, and I think everyone's really benefiting from that. It's looking really good. So 28.4 for the second lap. This is getting better. So it seems to be that the first corner is a little bit twitchy and then they sort of smooth out as they go around. Um, so it's, it's quite a good tactic, I guess. Really find your way through the first corner because it is where all the accidents happen. It was last year anyway. We ended up with a, a big pile up there in the, in the final um, where Enigma managed to squeak through and get out of the way. Sorry, spoiler. Um, but looking quite good here for their third lap. Probably about a 28 again, I'd say. 28.01 on the nose. I'm getting better at that bit. Predicting lap times now. I'm getting better at seeing all the splits. It's good. Fairly consistent times. Getting faster all the time, which is good. Um, it'd be interesting to know whether Bebop, whether you've used the basic code or whether you've put in your own little bits and pieces and see how you've improved it. It'd be interesting to know. I like to know anyway, because I don't get told so that I can't then spill all the secrets. So tell me your secrets, and I promise I won't say anything. Um, I definitely won't mention it on the commentary. Um, 27.6, wow, so that's even getting better. So maybe if we lift them out for another two or three minutes, we'd start picking up even more. It's looking really good. Robot 71, time is up. But, alas, the Aaron of Doom from upstairs has told us that that is it for Bebot. So that's your two minutes. Um, hopefully your logs will be good. I'd check out that last lap, whatever you did there. Keep that. It was really good. Um, so Aaron will come out from his little, little hidey hole on Headbanger Corner and retrieve the robot. There we go. And we'll get us ready for the final of the Yeti Ball class robots. Uh, let's delete my thing. It's very complicated. I am going to ask for Emacs one this once it, this is over, and and so I can move from Notepad plus plus because we all know what trouble I have with it. Um, <laughs> so tonight, for the final time for the Yeti Ball class, we have our final robot who has submitted code, um, and they are I shuffle my papers about. They are a team from Australia. Hey! So, Tim will be pleased. 49 is powered. 
This is Spark CC from West Gosford in Australia. Uh, they list their experience as 10 years plus coding. Uh, three developers aged between 30 and 40, so adult team. Uh, this is going to be exciting. I'm, I'm excited that we've got so many Australian teams. Tim will be excited as well. He'll be cheering you guys on. Um, so this is their first time in Formula Pi. This is their first time racing. Uh, their strategy is to tidy up the code and add tests first, both to learn how it works and then make the optimization easier. Good plan. I'm liking your strategy. Um, we'll see how they do. Uh, see if we can get them round safely on their first lap. Um, I was saying last time when we had a, an Australian competitor, who I'm sure is coming up later in the Monster Borgs, um, Tim's Australian, you may or may not know, he doesn't have an accent anymore, he's kind of lost it, um, but he was born in Newcastle, which actually isn't that far from West Gosford, um, and we popped by the awesome car museum they've got in Gosford last time we were over there, it's really good, so I can highly recommend it, if you're into your Australian muscle cars, um, you know, Mad Max style Holdens and, Co and Commodores and everything like that, uh, check out the uh, Gosford car museum, that's my pro tip if you're ever in the area, um, because it's awesome. Um, I have some lovely pictures on my Instagram of a big purple, is it a GTO? Mm, can't remember. It was a really nice, um, proper 70s muscle car. Really nice. I had all the names written down, so I wanted to come and look them up, see if I could actually have one. Um, yeah, I haven't got That's my dream. One day, just be cruising around the fens of Cambridge here in a big Australian muscle car. That would be epic. Um, because it's all right-hand drive as well, and then I don't have to worry about it being left-hand drive or anything, and I still get a big V8. What more could you want? Um, Tim's promised me one day he'll find me one and we can restore it um, but I'm guessing that's close to the two minutes I've waffled enough now um, let's see start light sequence when we're ready please just so that Aaron can get underway as soon as we're ready I've found a crisp I'm very hungry I haven't had my dinner yet um, let's see start light sequence when ready please And there we go. So I did start at the right time. Reset the timer. Oh, thank you, George. Lifesaver. Well, that, yes, that registers in time. Oh, George, you hero. Um, I almost didn't do that. Oh, but we've got a non-starter. Oh, so after all that panic of me smashing the space bar at high speed, we appear to have a non-starter. Oh, no. Oh, I hate it when this happens because we have to feverishly panic and wonder if it was us or whether it was the code. So, with a non-starter, um, usually what we do is we'll investigate to see if the light sequence is actually registered by the robot. If it was registered, then we will run the robot probably tomorrow in a session, which we will record. We'll post up on YouTube and send you the link. Um, it won't be done like the live timing, but it will be sent to you. Um, I'm assuming that's a non-starter. Tim Freeburn has come downstairs, so I can get the live update from him. We will change that card over to a different robot just to check. Okay. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll run number one, the first of the monsters, which is Enigma. Okay. So, for those that didn't hear that, because Tim was a little bit far away from the microphone, um, we're going to swap that card uh, into the other Yeti ball just to make sure that it wasn't our fault and that everything's okay with that robot. And we will run it after we've run the first of the monster ball class tonight, which we kick off with our old favourites and Formula Pi champions. Okay, Robot 1 has now been powered. There we go. Uh, Enigma, who are the number one plate, and rightly so, absolutely smashed it last year, hold the lap record for the... Did we, have a, we don't even have a circuit name for this circuit. I guess it's the Pi Borg HQ track. Um, they hold the record, 24.2 seconds. Adam and the team are in the chat tonight. I've seen you all already this evening, so good evening, Adam. Um, so yeah, I really did so well last year um, and did well in testing last week after the initial bug that we found was our problem where we'd actually wired the robot up incorrectly, so very sorry for that. We fixed it, um, it's fine, nothing was on fire and they're good to go this week. So for the second week running, we have Enigma going and as you can see with the, with the new robots, we've got the Monster Ball because they have the big bright LED underneath which allows us to light the track up underneath the robot. Uh, so that they look really fancy pants and I can tell what robot it is just by the way they're lighting up the track and it looks really cool um, so yeah that's why we love that but Enigma uh, if I remember rightly from my team notes uh, the three automotive engineers uh, in the team Adam, Jake and Alex uh, specialising in engine and alternative fuel calibration which is really exciting 
I'm really interested in that sort of thing, just because I've, I've kind of come to engineering late in life. I started off as a pure mathematician, now I'm an engineer and I love it. Um, so en like engine management stuff and all that kind of the fuel stuff and hybrid power and things like that fascinates me. Um, so I'm, I'm still keep meaning to check out your website and kind of have a look at what you do, because um, it sounds really awesome. And so yeah, good to have you with us. And looking like they had the fastest lap in the Monster Balls last week as well, which I think was somewhere around 15.8 seconds. Um, that was with the timer that I didn't set. I've set it this time. George has reminded me very kindly. Um, so we should we be... We are ready for the start line. We should be able to time you any second now. So start the light sequence, please. And we'll get Enigma underway. Uh, so we're looking to see if they can smash the 15.8 second lap record that they set last week in the Monster Ball class as well. So green, red, just waiting for the green light. Again, green, and they're off. Here we go. So two second first splits, looking good. Nice tight line coming around that corner. They're so much faster, these robots, than the 80 balls. I, guess we, I can't wait until we have five of them on the track. It's going to be so exciting. So here we go. Last corner. Seems to be tracking really, really well. Nice and tight. 16.9 for the first lap. Oh, bit of a spin. Don't know what that's about. That is not a three-second lap. And I've lost track of the robot now. Oh, there we go. And they're off again. Okay, so we'll add those two onto this lap time when we put them back up on the website. That is not a three-second or a nine-second lap. Um, but that is interesting. I wonder why they did the spin round. Um, Adam raises a good question. Do the lights underneath cause any issues with multiple bots on track? We're not sure, actually. That's a very good question. Um, we're going to have to look into that. I might have to raise that with Tim. I'm sure he's thought about it. Um, and uh, But you, you guys seem to be... I don't know where you've gone. I've lost you. There we go. And we're off again. Not quite sure why your robot keeps spinning round, though. Oh, such a tight line round that corner. Crikey! That was so tight. If that was a full lap, that would have been amazing. That was... He was almost like glue stuck to the wall there going round. Still... Kind of going back the wrong way, though, which will confuse your opponents, but not sure what's happening there. Oh, God, they seem to have mounted the barrier now. I can just see over there. Let's see if I've got... I've, oh, no, they've, they've managed to self-right themselves again. This is the problem with the, the monster balls as well. Because they're so much more powerful, they can easily just eject themselves from the arena. It's actually quite terrifying. 18 seconds there. Oh, clipping the wall as they came round. Keeping it so... This is like stuck like glue to the green line on the inside. This is Oh, this is going to be a good lap. Here we go. Come on. Oh, I just spun around at the last second. Oh, that was looking so good. That was so, so good. Um, it just You were like glue from the start line all the way around to the S's there. Just stuck to the wall like Velcro. 26.3. Uh, New team name? Team Velcro? Can we change that now? Is it too late? <laughs> is it too late to change? Um, this is looking like a better lap. But I think you're getting close to your time here with all the spinning around. Um, Robot one time is up. That's it. So, well, well that was 15.8 at the end, but pretend you didn't see that. Um, so that is, yeah, 15.8. But yes, Adam says, I think it's turning in early. I think so too. I think there's a lot of early turning going on here. As you watch Aaron come out from his little hidey hole and chase the robot. Oh, there you see. He's, he's, he's sold him a dummy and he's gone back around the other way. Now he's leaping across the track. There we go. That was so majestic. Wow. <laughs> I wasn't expecting him to sort of leap so majestically across the track there and chased the robot. There you go. Almost nutmegged him, sold him a dummy, went back around the other way. Brilliant. Uh, <laughs> see, that the Monster Borgs are so much more freaky than the, uh, <laughs> the Yeti Borgs. It was the right thing to give them a bigger name. Um, so I'm going to reset the timer. Okay, we have powered robot 49 for a rerun in a replacement Yeti Borg. So there we go. Uh, Tim has done his magic with the lids. We swapped the lids over, we swapped the cards over, and we're going to try and run Team Spark CC's robot uh, in the different Yeti Borg with the same SD card so we can give them a go uh, and see if it is the Yeti Borg or the code. Um, I think we're a bit more organised this week, so we should be able to get through everyone tonight. Might be a slightly longer session than last week. Um, but f saving any, any more issues... Um, this should be okay. Uh, what I'm going to do whilst we're running 
is I am going to give a quick shout out to all of our sponsors because we wouldn't be here without all the lovely donations from the, the couple of Kickstarters we've done to fund this and uh, all the lovely people who've opted to sponsor us like Blog Trotter, uh, who makes your RSS feed a piece of cake. Hence why the logo looks like a piece of cake. It's so good. Um, go and check them out. They go do lovely RSS feed aggregation, aggregation services. Uh, so check them out. Uh, next up, IQ Audio, who I mentioned earlier. Great audio add-on boards for the Raspberry Pi. There are DACs, there are amps, there are all sorts of things like you see from there. If you love audio, go and find them. Uh, they have some amazing add-on boards. Our friends Mob My Pi, uh, lovely resellers and distributors for the Raspberry Pi. Uh, lots of lovely accessories and add-on boards, including ours. Um, and Hot Packers, hello Tris, I can see you're in the chat tonight, so good evening. Hi Hannah, hi Tris. Uh, there are mates from Canterbury who have a lovely brewing collective called Hop Hackers. Uh, they do brew days and home brew sessions, so check them out. And finally, SOS Solutions from the Netherlands, another distributor of the Raspberry Pi and lots of electronics bits, so micro bit, um, Arduino, Android stuff. So yeah, check them out too. Um, and finally, if you want to sponsor us, get in touch, info at formulapi.com. Uh, if you've got any, any questions or anything you want to know, equally drop us an email. Um, that's how we best respond to people. We are on Twitter and all the rest of the usual places. Um, okay, we are ready hmm. for the start line. And as if by magic, uh, Sparks is here, ready to go. So please start the light sequence. And we will be good to go. So, green, red, green, and hopefully, fingers crossed for Sparks CC that they'll get away this time, and it was just a robot issue. Oh, no, it wasn't. Oh, there's nobody home. The lights are on. Okay, it looks like there's a code problem with 49. We are going to abandon running him for today. We, that is it. We're going to call it a day for Sparks CC. So, the lights are on. Nobody was home. Uh, we will investigate. We will get Tim to, and Aaron to look at the code. And we'll send a report back to you guys. Uh, in the same way we do for everybody, you'll get your logs back and a little report from us to, to show you, you know, some bits and pieces, if we feel like being nice. Which we are at the moment. I think we're in a good mood. I think we're nice for everybody. So, going back to the Monster Board class, uh, we have the next capacitor being readied up. Um, and let's shuffle my paper. I've got a lot of paper shuffling to do tonight. Crikey. Think of the trees, everyone. Think of the trees. So... I've done that, I've done that, so let's do this. Uh, Robot 74 is powered. It's, we're so well timed tonight, we're in perfect synchronisation uh, for Robot 74, which is Lambda Pi Racing, uh, pronounced Lambda P Racing, I think, um, from Bern and Hamburg, so proper European cooperation going on here. Um, quite a lot of experience programming, but no experience in Python, but seem to remember they did okay. I think there was a little problem with the robot last week for them. Um, but hopefully you've had time to fix it and return the code and so this time will be a lot, lot better. Um, like I said, uh, lots of experience, um, but almost always do web related stuff they say. So I'm guessing PHP, CSS, HTML stuff, maybe a bit of Ruby if you're feeling fancy. Um, let's see, I have done the timer, so I don't need to be reminded, um, but I'm so glad that everybody is reminding me, thank you, because <laughs> I, do, I do have a lot to do and it's very easy to forget all these things. Um, so, they're just waiting, ready to get going. Um, I never know whether, like how long two minutes is, I do lose all sense of time when I'm just sitting here chatting away to myself. Um, but, the uh, the robot that we see at the moment has the red light underneath, um, showing the, the different robot types, and, and like Adam raised a, a good point, um, the, we don't know if the lights are going to affect things. We don't think they are. Um, we are going to do some testing before racing to make sure this isn't an issue. Um, and if it is, I guess we'll go back to a similar system that we have with the other Yeti Borgs with the coloured panels so that they don't uh, impact the robots in front and behind. Um, I think the lights are probably close enough to not impact, but it would be interesting to see. Um, I'll, I will raise that point with Tim when he's not... Well, up there he looks like he's got his screwdriver in hand. You can just see him uh, above the little brown sign that we've got there above the lot. Okay, so there we go. Aaron, Aaron is ready. Let's see. Start the um, start the start light. I can't even say anything. Start lights, please. <laughs> I'm just words sometimes fail me. It's been a long day. Green, and then to the red and to the green, and then Lambda Pi will get away. Let's see how they go. Oh no! Eek! Another non-starter. Oh, that's such a shame. Oh, no. We are 
going to be rattling through these then. Tim has poked his little head up from his little perch there. I can see him. We are f cycling the lights desperately to see, and it looks like that is a non-starter for Lambda Pi. Um, so, I'll wait for radio instruction, but I'm sure that we will probably investigate this. At least Aaron doesn't have to run. Um, there we go. Let's... I can hear footsteps above me. So I know something's happening. Tim rolls his sleeves up there. Um, and I do have control of cameras at this point, so I might be able to change the angle so we can see what's happening over the table. Let's kind of have a look. Oh, no. No, I wasn't green off. There's Tim. So we can see Tim's little head there, and he's in charge of fixing all the robots over on that table. He's got one upturned there that he's working on. Um, so, back to the start line. And we will move on to the next robot. I'm not sure what we're doing with Lambda Pi. Robot 22 is powered. I will get an update from upstairs, so let's find out. Is Robot 74 a definite non-starter, or will we rerun? Tim is currently swapping him over into the monster that we were running for number one for a rerun. Okay. So, we will expect to see Lambda P back later uh, in a different Monster Borg. But for now, we will move on to the next one who's in my list of robots to go tonight. So we're almost halfway through. Um, so we've done quite well here. And it's an old friend of Formula Pi. It is Raspar Stalinfierno from Madrid in Spain. And they came third last year uh, in the competition. Sorry, I just read the chat and then got confused. Uh, yeah, came third overall last year. Did really well to get to the finals. Worked really, really hard all the way through. And we're talking about uh, implementing some machine learning code um, to run in this rather than the Python library, which would be good to see. And I'm assuming that that's what they've done. Um, but I can see George is in the chat, so he will correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but they were looking really good last season. And I, in their first heat, they did really well. I think they had two laps just to get used to everything. And they put in two 16-second laps, which were really strong. Um, so it'd be good to see how Raspberry and Fierno go. Um, tonight, and we can see they've got the magenta light underneath them, um, which I think, uh, yeah, looks quite good. I quite like it, but whether it's going to be good for the robots or not, it's going to be an interesting thing. Um, I'm sure Tim's done some testing, and like I say, I will ask him, um, but he's in the throes of r rattling things about with screwdrivers and poking things to see if they're all working. Uh, George is just updating, saying, not yet. Okay, so machine learning for the future then. Uh, but for now, I'm assuming uh, using the, the base code Robot with updates. Is ready for the start, right? There we go. So, I'll let Aaron let you on the way. Uh, have I done the timer? I didn't have to do the timer. It's good. Start light sequence, please. And with that, Rust Paris Lenfiano should be off the blocks. So here we go. Green, red, green, and they're away. So, let's see. Oh, tight line. Really tight line around the first corner there. That was looking really good. 2.1 seconds to get into the first split. That is tight. And coming around. Everybody's getting so tight with the Monster Borgs. Wow. Oh, spin around. And go back. Is there something in the water? Do I have need to have a word with Tim? We've lost the robot now. Oh, the... So there are actually... Tonight, usually Tim is in charge of the cameras. Um, but we have automatic cameras which flick when the robots trigger the lasers. There we go. So we can see Rasparas and Fiona coming into the last corner there and getting through 38 seconds on the first lap. But I think that with that turn, it's very weird. It's the same behaviour as Enigma. Um, so that's interesting. It'd be very interesting to see if that is... I think, I'm assuming the lighting's all the same. It looks the same. This looks better. This looks cleaner. Here we go, 15-6, that is a new lap record. Smashed it, there we go. Sorted. 15.6, nailed it. Uh, so, best lap so far, brilliant. Let's see if they can repeat it. This is looking pretty speedy as well. This is looking racy. Oh, 15-6-6, so close. I haven't got pen tonight. That's what I'm missing. I knew I was missing something, it felt weird. I was going to write down 15-6. Anyway, now we know, uh, best lap, brilliant. Uh, that is now... The newest fast so you can do it again. 15.7, also hovering dangerously close to the lap record. Just repeatedly putting in that good time. That is very impressive. Uh, so there we go, 10.8 coming through the last split. Let's see how we go. 15.8, brilliant. Uh, this is looking good for Rasparas and Fiero. Uh, so Adam says lighting issue. I'm kind of thinking so, but 
I don't think it is because we light it consistently every week. Um, the lights haven't been moved, so we will investigate properly. Um, 15, 9, so there we go. 22, time is up. And that is it for Rasparis del Infierno. Great times there. New lap record, 15.6. Um, we're not having winners in testing. I mean, you know, because you can't really have one. It's all Aaron having to make a bit of a run there to catch up the robot. Not having winners, but I think you're winning so far. Uh, that is some properly racy looking times. I think that you and Enigma this year are going to have a right set to. Uh, that is so impressive. Um, well done. So hopefully the logs will be look good for you. Um, so I now don't know who's lining up. This could be doo -doo -doo, Team Lambda Pi. I'm hoping it is. So I don't have to move much of my paperwork. Robot 69 is now powered. Right. So we are skipping on to the next competitor and I'm assuming we'll come back to Lambda Pi at the end. So, moving on to the next robot. I shuffle my papers now. I do have to shuffle my papers. So, here we have a new competitor to Formula Pi this year. Uh, this is Saska from Helsinki in Finland. Uh, I saw you in the chat earlier on, so good evening. Um, it's nice to have you with us. And they list their experience as being uh, JavaScript and some.net, but not much in Python, maybe a few years. So that is really good. Um, also 14 years old, so possibly our youngest solo competitor. Um, so really good luck, Saska. I hope you do really, really well. And our first Finnish competitor as well. Hopefully you will have the success that Bottas did at the weekend in the Formula 1. Sorry, spoiler. Uh, if anybody hasn't seen the Grand Prix from the weekend, sorry. Um, but he did really well, so hopefully you'll have the same luck as him. Uh, so good luck. We'll just wait for your robot to boot up and we'll see how it goes. Uh, I can actually see ISAS FTW in the uh, chat room. Uh, do you think it's a good idea to add logic to get out of walls? Maybe. I don't know. Uh, it could happen more in racing, especially if you're kind of um, tapped off other robots and, and you get sort of pushed into the wall. It might be good to have co code to get you out of that situation. But in these timed runs, it doesn't really happen unless you drive into the wall. So it's kind of, you could go, I mean, last year we did have some competitors who went with the the process that I'm not going to hit anyone, I'm just going to keep going. And when they did hit someone, it was it was difficult to recover. But for those that did have a sort of a slight avoidance code mechanism, they tended to do a little better when they were in the pack and when they were kind of dodging people. And it worked really well for them in those circumstances. But it's just a balance, really, of, of strategy and what works best for you in terms of your coding style and ability. If it, avoidance is something you can think you can put in between now and Friday, then yeah, Robot go for it. Um, ready for start, but if not, then you might just fare well leaving it out and avoiding the crashes by luck, which does happen quite a lot. There's a lot of luck in this. Um, so, can you please start the light sequence? Uh, so, here we go. The lights are kicking off for Saska now. First run for them. So let's see. Green, red, green. And then we'll be away. And Saska are off. Good start there. So 15.6 is the new lap record uh, by, by George and the Rasparas and Fierno team. Can Saska get close to that or smash it? It'd be interesting to see. This looks pretty smooth for the first lap. It's looking really good. Slightly wider line, taking the midline round the track. 17.5. Good start. A good first lap. That is fairly good. A little bit of a slowing down in that back corner, coming into the S's. Saw that a little bit last week, didn't we, where, where robots were sort of slowing down a little bit and kind of taking stock before moving into the S's. Uh, but this is looking pretty good. Keeping with the midline, 17.9. This is looking smooth and straightforward from Saska. Um, so first Finnish competitor. Uh, I think possibly first Scandinavian competitor. I could be wrong. Um, but doing really well here. Having three or four, or three smooth laps, 17.51, faster than the first lap. Um, so this is looking really good, nice and smooth. Um, I've not got much more to say, other than this is, this is just looking good. And it'll be interesting if you keep out to the midline, you may stay away from everybody close to the wall, which is kind of interesting. 17.6 um, for the fourth lap there. Also, I don't think we're going to have the laser timing rig up for actual racing. I think that will be taken down, so... If the lasers are impacting, I think somebody did ask a question. Um, it, it, they will be taken down, I'm assuming. Um, Tim will be back in control of the cameras there. 17.6. So these are five very consistent lap times there. Um, 
those, these are really like solid, consistent times. Um, so I'd like it's Sasko. You're in the chat. Um, I think you said you returned the base code. So this is obviously just sticking to what it knows best. But be interesting to see when you improve if we can keep the consistency going. Still slowing down into that top corner. This must be coming close to time now. I think Aaron's got all carried away. Nope, no, there he is. So there we go. Uh, let's stop the timer. Stab all the keys. There we go. Race over for Saska. Good job. Great first few laps there. Should give you some solid logs to read. Um, and let's watch Aaron jump up from his hidey hole and try and chase the robot. It's now becoming a thing. Robot herding should be a professional job listing somewhere. Uh, professional robot herder. Um, Mike and Tim, who uh, do Pi Wars, know a lot about robot herding. They're the experts. I'd love to be as good as them one day at robot herding. Um, but we can aspire. <laughs> we do aspire. <laughs> We've got a road trip coming up with Mike and Tim actually soon, which is very exciting, and I'm, I'm not going to say anything about yet, but we will we will tweet about it massively. So keep an eye on at pi underscore Borg and at Formula Pi underscore when we're maybe in next week. This is Robot 74 again in new robot for its rerun we're suspecting a code problem but we'll see right so as Aaron said we're going back up the list again uh, I did put a list of runners in the description tonight just so people can see who's running so they can get an idea of where we are on the list um, so this will completely confuse you uh, this is robot lambda pi again that we had earlier on in the track uh, we're a non-starter we've just swapped them into another robot to check that it's not a robot issue um, we do have three monster borgs now um, and we try to keep them on rotation. Uh, when you're racing, you will just get assigned a monster pork. It won't be any particular one that you get all the time. We have standard house robots that we maintain and moderate, and we make sure that they all behave the same before they race. Um, and we have rigs and stuff for making sure that all the cameras are pointing in consistent directions. There's lots of testing we do um, to make sure these robots are standardized, um, to make sure that they're all the same and get the same current and the same everything. Um, we're fairly fastidious about it when we're racing um, but obviously with testing like I said last week this is as much for us as it is for you guys to make sure that you've got your code right it's as, as much as a test for you as it is for us to make sure that the conditions are right the lighting's right the feed is right the sound's right the radios are right you know like everything that we do here um, and yeah it, it's interesting for us as it is for you guys I hope anyway I'm enjoying myself I get to sit in a room and, and chat to myself for like an hour and a half, which doesn't feel at all strange um, or weird. So hopefully, this time round, for the second time of asking, I digress, uh, we can have Lambda Pi getting away cleanly, and we'll see how they do with their lap. So Saska's just come in the chat. Hello again. Uh, hopefully you caught your run. Um, so they've been messing with the race code, and I think I've got... Robot. Just interrupting me there, Aaron. Why don't you? How rude. Um, <laughs> so Saska said uh, they got the same results in the simulator, if not a bit better. So that's cool. Um, good to know that it's similar results. We've seen kind of a mixed bag of people uh, with the, the simulator, seeing how it goes. Um, and let me just start the race off. Can you start the light sequence, please? Uh, he's asked, they're asking as well, what is the purpose of the lights under the robot? It's basically, so I know which robots they are. Um, it's difficult to see when they're all going so fast, which robots which. So here we go for the second time of asking. Let's see if Lambda Pi can get away. Oh, it's a non-starter. So we're, I think we're going to make the assumption that, that is a code issue. Uh, that robot is not making okay, a start. Okay, it looks like robot 74 is a non-starter, some kind of code problem. We'll move on to the next robot. Okay, so for robots that we think is a code problem right now, we test after this feed is closed. We actually do some testing to make sure that uh, the code saw the lights and it, you know, so, so many metaphors involved in this. Make sure the robots have seen the light um, and they know what's going on. Um, and if they, it is deemed to then be a mechanical problem, we do rerun the testing, uh, but usually in a private closed session that we don't broadcast. Um, it's, it's just because we don't have the time to do this every night uh, we have homes to go to I have dinner in fact that I want to be eating uh, I'm again as last week very hungry um, so we'll move on to the next robot uh, I don't know which one it is and I don't know if I've deleted things and I'm flapping about robot 27 is now powered right so Aaron has saved me from my panic um, 
to introduce the next robot, who is another old friend of Formula Pi. Uh, this is I Have Five from San Jose in America. Um, clearly my favourite because they, he lists himself as a Fortran coder. We've had this before. I reiterate every week, Fortran is the greatest language known to mankind. Um, it's very shouty, it's very loud, and it's cuddly. Um, and I love Fortran. So I Have Five is clearly my favourite. Uh, got through to the Eliminators uh, last year, and I think... You did, I seem to remember you did quite well in the tests and, and all the racing. You did really, really well. It was just such a shame that you didn't make it through to the final. Um, there were so many good robots that, that didn't quite make it, and we're really hoping that this year you have better luck um, and really do well this year. So, And obviously, being a Fortran program, I'm always going to back you 100%. Um, but I am a bit like Bruce Forsyth. Like everyone's my favourite. <laughs> so <laughs> don't, feel me, don't feel left out if I don't mention you. <laughs> I love everyone. Um, so I'm rustling my papers now I've done the timer so I don't have to be reminded about that um, we can just wait for the two minutes to start up um, so that for people who are new to Formula Pi uh, this two minutes that we've got here at the start is for the OS to boot up and for the code to load um, we gave two minutes because it seemed kind of fair time to us um, we don't want to be sitting here all night whilst your code loads and you load up lots and lots of complicated functions we want to keep racing moving so two minutes seemed like a good time to us um, and if your code can't launch in two minutes, then that's pretty much it. Um, we do, obviously I waffle a bit, so the two minutes does vary, but it, when it's racing, it really is two minutes and that's what we do. Uh, and then two minutes testing and you get the logs back after we've done this testing session to adjust your code. Um, and that's kind of how these sessions work. Robot 27 is ready for the start lights. So there we go. I can now call up and say, please start the light sequence. And we can get going with I Have Five from San Jose. Um, and I always end up singing that song with San Jose in the title, which I won't bore you with now. Every time I hear the name San Jose. But, hopefully. Oh, no! Oh, no, not another non-starter. Oh, dear. This is traumatic. Um, another non-starter. So Tim's going to have to do the International Robot Shuffle again uh, and put I Have Five into um, the other robot, um, I'm assuming, which means we'll move on to the next competitor. I'm kind of guessing. I'll wait for Aaron to, to let me know. Um, I should probably as well, whilst we're here. I'm just going to tip-tap away for a minute, talk amongst yourselves. Um, I should probably tweet out that we're doing stuff. I'm... I've been really bad. I've not tweeted this week about this being on. I probably should. Robot 59 is powered. So, whilst we power up that robot, I am going to tweet some stuff. Do, 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 see if I can. So, the next robot we've got up tonight is a new competitor again. Somebody new for me. Um, let's tweet this. Sorry everyone, I'm being really rude. It's like using your phone when someone's trying to talk to you. Um, shouldn't do it, but I just did. Sorry everyone. So, I've tweeted that now. We can talk about the next racer. Um, I think this is another new competitor. See, I don't, I don't get the numbers. I have the numbers written down, but I don't know who the people are. I'm desperately clicking trying to find this thing. Um, to boot up the spin view, you know, warm it up, get the pigeons running. This is another new team, actually. Awesome. This is Sonic from Kawasaki in Japan. Our first Japanese competitors. Yay! So we're getting really, really international now. Um, they list their coding experience of, as 18 years. So lots of experience, lots and lots of experience coming into this. Um, they chose their decoration as a bit of a joke. Um, it says, what does it sound top? Most exciting intelligent technology ecology car. Awesome. Is that what it stands for? I like this. This is good. This is a bit of a mystery. Um, but Sonic looking nice with the lid. It's looking really smart. So new competitor for us, new team. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they get on. So good luck, Sonic. Not sure what good luck is in Japanese. This is me needing to extend my uh, library of languages. Um, I know a few Japanese phrases, but not many. Mainly from anime over the years. And that library is just weird. Um, it's probably not right. So, this is Sonic waiting to go. Is this Sonic as a reference to Sonic the Hedgehog or something else? Am I missing something? Robot 59 
is ready for the lights. I think I'm getting a bit delirious now at the hour mark. I've been talking to myself for an hour. I'm just going a bit crazy. Um, so, start the light sequence, please. So we get on the way. So, here we are. Sonic's first run here in Formula Pi. Hopefully, they'll get away cleanly. Let's go. And they're off. Good. Phew, not another non-starter. Excellent. I'm pleased. And we're away. Slowing down in the first corner. It seems like a lot of people slow down to turn. Um, but it seems quite good. It means you can get a bit of a tighter line of attack on the corner. Um, I can't imagine that five people doing that in one corner is going to be good, though. 17-4 for the first lap. So similar times as we were seeing from Saska. Um, so, we're looking good here for Sonic. Uh, I can see Thomas E's in the chat saying, it's expected that I don't react on the lights, but it should run after two minutes. Okay, so you have to react to the lights, much like Sonic have done here. You have to go as soon as the lights go. If we don't see it moving within two, if we don't see it moving with the lights cycling, we then pick up the robot. So that's kind of uh, we didn't expect you to to sit there and wait. We expect you to go when the lights go. I don't know if that's confusing, um, but these lap times are looking good. That is a sixteen six from Sonic. That is almost as rapid as Sonic the Hedgehog. Not quite as fast as the lap we saw from earlier on from Ras Paris at Infierno at 15.6, which is now the lap record. Um, but still, these are pretty good times. A little bit variable, but still going. A little bit of sinusoidal movement there, going from side to side in the red lane. Uh, seems to be tracking and readjusting, which is slowing you down a little bit, but these are looking pretty good. Um, staying in the mid line, and preferring the mid to red. So that is good 18 6 lovely this is looking good so we've got some sort of quickish times but again when we actually get racing the slightly slower robots might actually fare better because they'll stay out of the crashes and they'll keep out of trouble you know a bit like the tortoise and the hare they'll just kind of creep up at the back um so slowing down in the first corner again this is interesting robot 59 Ooh. time is and that is it for Sonic from Japan, so thank you. Um, well done for getting your first runs done. Robot has now got to be collected by Aaron before he delicately gets across the track. It's quite difficult with the obstacle course in the middle. It's a genuine, real-life obstacle course for humans and robots. Um, we like to put everyone through it here, just as kind of a, a test to make sure that you can cope with robots. Um, <laughs> not really, joking. Um, it's part of the Pie Wars course um, that we've got kind of set up in our office just because why not um so there we go as i've just seen adam saying uh, the light's normally a, a battery indicator 66 is powered. so there's 66 ready to go uh, he says it's a battery indicator um but it's being used to show who's who and if they're upside down yes that is exactly what the light is used for it's for me more than anything um so that i have a, a good idea of who it is that's racing and so that when you do flip upside down and i can't see your lid i know exactly who it is so for the, the end billionth time tonight we're going back to the spin view to our mystery competitors from italy um i'm assuming they're called shtp we really need you to fill in your registration form um because i don't know who you are and i can only say you're from italy and that's it i don't know anything more about you and we'd love to have a bit more information about you so we can make conversation um, and just talk about how awesome you are. Um, so whoever you are, number 66, send us back your rego form, please, uh, if you haven't already. Um, I do have a list of people in front of me who I will read out later uh, when things are quiet. Well, I did have earlier on. I seem to have eaten it. Lots of paperwork. Naha, um, I found it. Uh, I have a list of people who are on my kind of like Santa Claus's naughty list. They're the people who haven't sent in code or registration. And I will read out that list at the end um, for people who are um, tuning into this now and saying, where's my robot? Um, well, I have an answer. Uh, you haven't sent us any code. So there we go. <laughs> That's part of the rules is uh, you have to send us some code. Otherwise, if you don't send code before the submission deadline, we will assume you're not racing. Um, we thought it was unfair to enter people into the competition without them participating with us um, because somebody could just join and then their code would just be not changed it could run the house code and they could potentially win without actually doing anything Mobile so 66 is ready for the start. 
not right. You have to send us your code. Them's the rules. Um, so, 66 is ready. We're going to kick them off. Uh, start light sequence, please. And get this mystery Italian team underway. I'll find out what mystery is in Italian. A bit like Enigma. And I can just call you that. Um, <laughs> that will make my life easier. It gives you a name. And they're off. Slightly slower start. Um, picking a considered line around the track. Just cruising. Ever so gently. Um, we did see this from a competitor last week. It may actually have been them. Uh, just taking it slowly, slowly catching monkey. It's a fair strategy. You'll avoid all the crashes. You may cause some though. Um, which might make things awkward for the other competitors. But um, we can wait and see. But this is looking smooth, but slow. Uh, 36.3. If I didn't know any better, I'd say it was running at 50%. That'd be my guess. If we're looking at 15.6 second fastest lap time from Georges and the Ras Paris Inferno team, um, I would suggest that SHTP, that your code is possibly running at 50%. Um, which puts it on slower than the Yeti Borgs. Um, very accurate, but quite slow. So that might need looking at. Um, so, still going. 37 seconds. They're probably only going to get three full laps in at this pace. Um, they've got the blue light underneath them, which looks quite nice, actually. Seems to blend in well. It's nice. See, I've got nothing to say about you. You should send in your form. got nothing to chat about here. All by myself, in a box. Uh, so, Mark B from I Have Five has just updated us saying, bummed about the non-start. We did that last week due to permissions issue. Yeah, that was our problem, but we sorted it. Like I said, we didn't change the start line code from last week either, so I'm confused. Okay, we will investigate that because we've had a couple of non-starts tonight, so we'll look into it post-testing. Um, um, I think that's it. Robot 66, time is up. So there's Aaron with the timer of doom upstairs. Uh, creative Wolf saying, lol, slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. It is. It's a technique. It's a known technique in racing, slowly, slowly, catchy monkey. Um, and it works, clearly, because th did SHTP hit the wall? No, it didn't. They kept going. Props to them. So I've hit the space bar now, and Aaron will have probably no issue scooping up that robot. So you put him under a lot of pressure. He's got to catch them as they come around the corner. It's super difficult. I've tried catching one of them robots. Um, and when we were herding them about at the, at the Pi Party and Pi Wars, massively difficult. Who knew um, that making a robot faster would make it evidently more difficult to look after? Um, so as we move on to the next robot, swiftly moving on. Um, I'm going to delete all this there. God, it's so difficult. With all this control, and I can see. Oh, is that on the radio? Twenty-seven has been repowered for a test, uh, a rerun in a different robot. Hopefully, this will work better this time. Right. So, Mark B, you've you've arrived just at the right time. Um, we're restarting your robot in another robot. Uh, we'll restart your code in another robot. Sorry. Oh God, you can tell I've been doing this for an hour now. Um, <clears throat> We're, we're running your code in a different robot to make sure that it's not our problem. Um, we really are going to make sure that this is definitely an issue uh, an issue with the code rather than the robot. Um, obviously, like I said earlier on, and I'll reiterate, um, every robot that gets tested, we will return logs to each of the, the races that are involved in the competition, and we will test the robots ourselves and test the code to make sure that there were no problems. If we find that there was a problem with, with the hardware and not the software, and it was in fact our fault that, that this robot didn't run, we will rerun it in a private session and still send you the logs under the same conditions, just not broadcast. Um, we will make sure that you get the same timing and the same testing as everyone else. Um, we really try to make sure that there are no issues um, with the robots that we provide. Um, that's the least we can do, really. Um, and yeah, if there are any problems with anything, then we will make our do our best to make sure that you get your testing time the same as everyone else. Um, so yeah, good luck, Mark B. I can see you in the chat. Um, obviously, like I said, you're my favourite because you know Fortran. We're you know kindred spirits, so I'm I am really hoping that you get going this time round. Um, 
I can just see as well, uh, Richard Haler has joined us from the Haler Girls. Good evening, sir. Um, hope your new job's going all right, by the way. I saw you on Twitter saying you've got a new job. Hope it's going okay. Um, I haven't really been on Twitter for the last few days. I've been very busy at work. Um, oh. Robot 27 is ready for his second go at the start line. So there we go. I have five. He's now back on the line. And we will start the light sequence, please. So Aaron will kick off, or Tim. I can't remember who's in control of the lights at this point now. Someone upstairs will flick the switch, and hopefully, Mark B, you will get away with I have five now. Go. Nope. Oh, that's such a shame. I was really hoping you were going to okay, get away. It looks like 27 has a code problem, and we're going to give up running him for today. Okay, so I have five. We're going to have to retire you at this point. I'm really sorry. Um, like I said, we will investigate, and we will let you know what we find, um, and if it does it turn out to be a robot issue we will run you again in a session so don't worry you will get your time um richard Haler says i thought we were your favorites i did say i'm like bruce forsyth i have lots of favorites um i'm i have favorites all over the world um you you're my favorites promise <laughs> i definitely promise <laughs> But you haven't missed yourselves either. You are going penultimately, I believe, tonight. So, I now get to... We're on to now the last five robots. So, the, these are the last five for tonight. Uh, I'm so sorry, Mark, but I can see your frustration in the chats going, ah, I know, I, I'm so sorry. Um, we will investigate, we will let you know, um, and we'll see what we find. But, next up flip my sign over to another new team. We have Team Sky and the Murpups. I am massively loving your Snapchat image. That's a really good profile image. I'm enjoying that. Uh, they're new to Formula Pi, new team from Edinburgh um, in Scotland. Um, minimal Python experience, but lots of .NET experience. Um, who chose the design? Uh, my daughter's design. I haven't seen your lid. I'm guessing we haven't received your lid yet. Um, or we have, and we haven't put it up there, but I'm assuming we have. Either way, welcome to Formula Pi. Um, your code has made it to us, and you will be racing and testing tonight, so good luck. Um, it's, they're saying, have they done any, anything interesting with the code? Not yet. I'd be interested to hear what you are thinking of doing with the code, and what you're planning to do. That'd be really interesting. Um, but new, new team for us tonight in Formula Pi. I'm enjoying the name. Sky is a very beautiful part of the world. Um, not only for its beautiful cooling range, but the amazing whiskey, obviously. Um, and me and Tim are very excited about going up to Scotland next week uh, with Mike and Tim for the, the yet as unadvertised secret trip that we're having. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. If Mike and Tim, if you're still here listening, I'm, I'm really excited about next week. Um, but yeah, we are coming up to Scotland. We'll be in Glasgow for a few days. Um, so not that far from Edinburgh, really, um, but quite away from Sky. But I, I thought with your team name, really enjoy it, but you totally could have gone down the Skynet route. <laughs> That was my first pun. I thought, you know, Skynet would have been an amazing name for a team. FYI. But really enjoying your name, either way. Um, so, we will get you underway. Start the light sequence, please. So, Team Sky and the Murpups. Uh, looking smooth on the start line there with a lovely magenta light underneath. Great colour. And they're off. They're away. So, we do have a robot away now. Did I do the timer I did? Whew. Crikey. I forgot. I almost forgot. But this is looking good for Team Sky. Coming through the S's, sticking to the red. So keeping it wide might actually not be a bad strategy when it comes to racing, because everybody's like, oh, fastest line, inside line. But if everybody's there, you know, you're going to be grand on the outside. So 19-3, great start light. Um, and, yeah, good solid first lap. Coming into the green for the second lap. Ooh, that, that could be a really interesting strategy, couldn't it? Keeping it wide for the first one and then going close. Maybe alternating, stay away from trouble. That's interesting. Hmm. Giving away giving away strategy now. 18-1 for the second lap. So these times are coming down. Obviously pulling it into the green a little bit more has increased their lap time, sorry, decreased their lap time. Um, and this is looking really, really good for them now. In the midline, nice and smooth. 17.9. Uh, so just squeezed under the 18 second mark there. Uh, getting faster every lap. I think because you're pulling it into the green, and going a little bit faster to the inside line, uh, your lap times have, have come up a little bit, which is good. Well, we've gone down, sorry. Oh, I'm getting delirious now. Around 15 minutes. 
Crikey. 18.5. This is, this is looking good. We've got some good consistent lap times here. Slowing down in that corner again. That's really interesting seeing the robots do that. I'm intrigued to find out what that is. I'm really excited to know what that is. Um, yeah, coming into headbanger corner here. As they go round the last corner. 19.6. And I'm imagining this is getting close to time for Team Sky and the Merpops now. Uh, really enjoying your Snapchat image. I'm still giggling to myself inside about that. I love that rainbow Snapchat filter. It's my funniest. Um, yeah, um, Adam is saying they didn't get off the line in the first competition and they did all right in the end. Certainly did. Um, smashed it. And yeah, so anything can happen in Formula Pi. It really is. Robot 70, time is up. So there we go. That's it for time. Team Sky and the Merpups. Um, but yeah, anything can happen. It really is anybody's race. It's not just going to be the fastest person that gets through in the end so it really is all to play for um and so there's some good times from team sky there so hovering around the 18 19 second mark it's looking pretty good consistency is key as well because on the distance when we start going for the longer races it's going to be really good to see how you get on with the really consistent lap times versus the kind of on off fastest laps it's going to be a right proper race right proper set two so next up it's almost like we've got some sort of ESP going on here, and Aaron seems to message down within seconds of me starting saying the next robot number. Um, so here we have another friend of Formula Pi last year competed, uh, competed as well in the Yeti board class. So next up, number 34, it is Swinders from Waterlooville in the UK. Uh, I keep saying that me and Tim used to live down that part of the world. It's really lovely. So it's great to have Swinders back on board from a really lovely part of the world. Uh, programming since 1983. Uh, seem to remember you worked for Honeywell. I think that was right. Um, I've not looked at my sheet. I've been bad. Um, but programming since 1983, various languages, basic, assembler, uh, Java, now coding mainly in LabVIEW. Um, so, wow, really different range of languages there. Lots of different abilities in the team. Um, but good to have them back. Uh, I think they got to the Eliminators last year and were so close to getting to the final as well. Um, it was really close in the Eliminators. It was really tight and it was it was the five we had we, you know we were, we were definitely deserved to be there but it was anyone's race in the eliminators anyone could have taken it and uh, that's what's so interesting about it and so exciting and how everybody's improving um so they chose their design to look like a tech brain it really does um and the binary numbers represent the ascii values for our competitor number which is very cleverly tied in i like that um, any design that's anything like that is so cool in my view. Um, so, Swinders just warming up there with the yellow light underneath for him. Uh, and I'm getting really thirsty now. Whew, hour and 20 minutes. Crikey. You're all doing well for still staying here. Have you not gone and had a cup of tea? I should give you a break, really. So we're going to disappear for five minutes and I can go for a comfort break and uh, have a cup of tea. Robot 34 is ready for the light. But we are only four away from finishing now, so once we've done these, we can all go and have our dinner and, and have a nice relaxing evening. Um, so, start light sequence please. And we will get Swinders underway for the second testing time for him. I seem to remember you were here last week as well. Um, green, red, green, and Swinders is off the line. There we go, away, going quite quickly to the inside line. Slowing down on the outside and then accelerating again out of the corner. A lot of competitors seem to do that. I don't know if that's just a, a favourite line choice or whether that's just something about turning that tight corner. The robot really has to slow down to make the turn, otherwise it will career into the wall. Oh, I didn't do the timer. Oh, nobody reminded me. Right, I'm doing the timer now. We'll get a lap now as he comes across the line. So sorry. Oh, I've done so well tonight up till this point. Obviously the logs within the pie are still recording. Um, so you will still get logs internally, you just won't get them on the screen right now, apart from now they've just started. Um, so sorry, Georges, yeah, sorry, we were a bit late, mate, and we're just not on it, sorry. Um, but we, we got, we've got it now, we're, we're here, we're sorted. So, first lap, 16.29. Good first lap from Swinders, this is looking competitive. Fastest lap we saw this evening earlier on was from Georges and the Rasper Stel Inferno team, who is my timer buddy. Um, so thank you for reminding me. Sorry I didn't put it on. Like I said, the logs will still record it. 15.29! 16, sorry, 16.29 again! Talk about consistency! 
Yes, that's what we're looking for. Um, see if we can do a three. Can we do a three? Because then you, you do have the perfect code. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oh, that could have been three. That would have been a definite achievement unlocked if you'd got three. But 16.19, that is so consistent. Um, sorry, Swinders, I didn't do the timer. I'm really sorry. But like I said, the, the logs will get it. They will They will definitely have all the information. It doesn't affect the logs. 16.28, talk about consistency. This is impressive. This is very, very impressive. Um, this oh, I can't believe this. This is so good. Yes, much better time than last week. But, let's see... Yes. Robot 34, time is up. So, I think you win the prize for tonight for consistency. That is amazing. I mean, look, all of those lap times that I recorded, so sorry. Um, all of the times I recorded within two tenths, that is pretty impressive. Really well done. Um, within three tenths, maybe. My math is broken. It's been a long day. But still, very impressive. That's the most consistent set of times we've seen. Brilliant. Plus points to take away from testing tonight for you, sir. Um, well done. Sirs, maybe. There's there's more than just you on your team, isn't there? I seem to remember. Um, so, coming into the last three robots now. And I'm going to do the timer now before I forget. God, Jimmy, you can't trust me with anything. I'm, I'm given a few jobs. Useless. Robot 67 is powered. So, shuffling my papers and moving on to the next robot. Uh, we are looking at ooh, the very artistic and abstract top robot from the IT guy from Independence in Oregon. Um, so, that is looking very nice, that top of the robot. So, you remember last week, this was quite a slow time, maybe? Um, I really should make notes. I would remember things better. Um, I seem to remember it was a bit, a little bit slow, but still, good lap times, putting in some races. Um, and hopefully, we'll do similar tonight. So good luck, the IT guy. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing you run again, because that top is really pretty. Um, properly artistic, abstract top, and very distinctive as well. Um, but yeah, Swindon said first lap was different logged. It was logged for you internally, but just not on the screen for all of us to see. Um, so you'll get all that information. Like, my button presses share no, like, no likes to... Oh, God, I've lost words now. <laughs> they share no similarity. Uh, the buttons presses here is merely for the screen timer. Your actual logs will be logging everything. Um, so not just me pushing buttons. Because, I mean, if we gave my, me that much responsibility, seriously, the whole world would fall apart. No one would be happy. And I'd just be calling everybody my favourites. And we all know that's how it, how it would roll. <laughs> because this is, you know, it's a big job. There's a lot, a lot of things for me to do. And And next week... Racing will resume normal service. Tim will be in the room with me. I won't be by myself and trusted with all of this equipment to um, looking after everything and making sure the feed's working and chatting and, you know, talking randomly. Richard Haler says he's got a pack of Yorkie chocolate buttons. Oh, so jealous. Robot 67 is ready for the start line. Yorkie chocolate is particularly good. Other chocolates are available. Um, please start the light sequence. And we will get the IT guy underway. So 15.6 is the best lap we've seen tonight from Ras Paris Olympiano. Let's see if the IT guy can get close to that. And we're off. So, good first set time, 2.07, fairly competitive. Again, slowing down. Everyone just sort of slows. Is it because that corner is so tight and the robots overshoot because they're going much faster than the Yeti Borgs? I don't know. This is interesting. It's uh, interesting to see. 18-2. Good first lap. Solid first lap. And looking pretty speedy here. Nice tight line through the S's, sticking into the blue on the right-hand side of the track. That is the, the faster inside line. Then swinging out wide. Still staying in the green, so it's looking quite good. This could be another fast lap. 18-1-4. So, looking fairly speedy. Uh, Shaw says, code is due Friday for the race. Yes. I'm afraid it is. We go racing. Uh, no, actually, it should be... I don't think it is this Friday. I'll double check the dates. Um, it should be next Friday. Um, I'll double check. 18.7 for the third lap. That is looking pretty tidy. Nice and consistent again. Um, not the spot on consistency that's always windows, but still pretty good within the second. Uh, let's get the old dates up and double check this. So, 
coming in for fourth lap. 18.3. That is good. We're staying within the 18 second mark here. This is very, very good. Uh, it does say code due for race one on Friday. Um, I think that could be because we are away the following week. Um, I'll double check the dates. Hmm. Let's have a look. 18.9. So we're all staying within the 18 second here. So again, another contender for most consistent driver of the night. This is looking really nice. Um, I think that you and Swinders are probably in, con on, in contention for that award together. Not that anyone wins testing. Um, you know, we don't have winners here tonight. We just have my favourites, um, which I will reiterate is pretty much everyone. But you get plus points if you're a Fortran coder. That's kind of it. 19.7. That is looking a little bit outside the time. Robot 67. Time is up. So that is it. Uh, race over for number 67, the IT guide. Uh, IT guy. I'm really going to struggle with that. I'm, I'm, I think I'm just because it's the end of two hours now. My, my mouth's going a bit funny because I've been talking. It's very weird talking like this all by yourself. Like you think that you're kind of on your own and then you realise you're not because you lot are in the chat. Hello. But yeah, it's kind of weird. Um, yes, you should get the logs fast. Um, we should be doing the logs probably straight after this. I will double check with Aaron and Tim what's happening. We might be getting pizza and saying you're late. Um, but yeah, we will make sure you get your logs very, very speedy. Um, I'll, I'll make sure that that is a thing. Um, I'll nag them because I can. So yeah, uh, code you with this Friday. Um, so yeah, we'll get your logs to you really, really quickly. In the meantime, uh, we'll move on to Mr. Yorkie Chocolate Button. So jealous. Uh, this is the Halo Goodall. So look, ice cream's in the pictures, Yorkie Chocolate Button's in the chat. He's just trying to make me hungry. Um, from Surrey in the UK. Uh, did really well at Pi Wars this year as well, as, as doing really well in Formula Pi. They came fifth last year in the final. Um, did really, really well. And looking strong again for this year. Really good lid. It's 3D printed, which you can't tell from that picture. Um, the little alien is actually 3D printed along with the HG, and it looks really good. It's fab. Um, it's the only 3D lid that we have. It looks very cool. Um, obviously, 3D lids are totally legit. You're allowed to do that, as long as it doesn't scrape on the floor when it flips upside down. It's all good. You can have sticky up bits. Um, obviously, we have the final say on whether a lid is suitable or not, um, but the Halo Goodalls have nailed it. Low-profile 3D printing. That is the way to go. Um, and it looks really fab. Uh, purple light underneath. Penultimate robot to go tonight. Um, like I said, did really, really well at uh, Pi Wars earlier on this year. Um, we managed to meet up and say hi at both Pi Party and Pi Wars, so it's good catching up with you guys. Um, and yeah, it, they did really well. I can't remember your times in testing last week. I seem to think it was quite good. I seem to remember you, you did really well. I think we've seen a lot of really good, good competitiveness from the returning Formula Pi alumni. Uh, so it's, it's good to see them continuing to progress with these faster robots. Robot 33 is ready for the start line. Okay, so we'll get going then. Uh, start slightly, uh, start light sequence please. Wow, my words. I am I'm literally two hours now, I am flagging. And you guys, timer, 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 timer. <gasps> George, thank you, hero. Yes, oh man, he saved my life so much tonight. Woo, okay, we got it, we're there, we nailed it, yes. <laughs> First corner, got through nice and cleanly. S-Ben's looking good as well. So, coming around the final corner. Let's see what we've got here. I'm calling this about a 17 or an 18. Oh, 17, eight, pretty close. Looking good. Thank you, George, for saving my life. Um, <laughs> two hours in, I'm getting like cabin fever now with the timer pressing. Um, but yeah, the Halo Goodalls have done really well so far. Um, these times are looking fairly good as well. It, this monster ball class is gonna be so tough. There's gonna be so many people at about the 16, 17, 18 second mark. It's gonna make the actual racing so tight. Um, again, slowing down in that top corner. I think this is a, a general speed thing. I think the, the robots are um, noticing the sharpness in the track and actually adjusting their speed um, because it seems to be everyone is doing it. Um, it's just because it's, it is so tight. Although that looked like that was on rails. That was much better. Um, that, was, that was so quick. Yeah, and like I said, I keep reiterating. Yeah, George needs a remote reset timer button, says Adam. Yes, he totally does. Can we do that? Can I farm out some of my jobs to you guys with little buttons? That would be amazing. Please, can we do that? <laughs> For next week, I'm going to make some some 
buttons that hook up to the internet. We get some IoT stuff set up and push a button and it does the timer for me. Because I have too much to do here. Or you guys could just come and join me here. We can have a party. and you know We can actually do Formula Pi with a proper audience and everything. Um, <laughs> as long as you don't mind coming to a, a random... Give me an API and I'll reset the timer. Right. <laughs> we might do this. Probably won't. Because next week we're going to the racing, so we won't have the timer up. But, yes, I think we should. I'm going to put it forward as a motion. But the Halo Goodall's times here, going back to the actual thing we're doing, uh, looking really good. Again, consistency. We're seeing a lot of really strong, consistent testing runs here. Um, lap times are within a half second of each other here, are we looking at? Level 33, time is So that up. is up. I'm going to let you have the last one, because I'm feeling in a, a generous mood. But there we go. That is very consistent. So within half a second of each lap, either side. Between 17.76 was the best there to 18.23. Two identical lap times in that set for the Halo Goodalls. That is a really, really good run as well. Um, looking forward to the racing now. This could be really close. And I'm also a little bit scared about what happens when there is a robot stopped on the start line, because those monster pogs are big. Um, that's going to be a really horrible big crash. I fear for Aaron and Tim having to repair things. I feel like a lot of repairs and maintenance <laughs> coming our way. <laughs> At least with the Etiborgs, they're a bit more sort of gentle. Like, oh. is powered. Okay, so finally, for the last time tonight, so we can all go home and watch Netflix and have our dinners, we have number 58, which is Moto Toasty from Sydney in Australia. Uh, G'day. Oh, great picture by the beach. Love it. Um, so they list themselves as being a pro newbie uh, with no Python experience. So one professional software developer, the other is a complete newbie to this. So this is new stuff. Timer. Yes, George, I will do the timer. I'm now, you see, now I haven't done the start light. I can do, I can do it. I can, I, but I can't see the screen right now. So when it comes back, I will. But yes, <laughs> as I was saying, um, they are one professional programmer and one complete newbie, so this is interesting. So kind of like a mentor teacher thing going on, that's cool. Um, their other relevant hobbies are riding motorbikes, awesome. Um, I ride BMX, which is almost a motorbike-ish. But Tim won't let me out with a motocross bike because he fears that I might hurt myself. Um, lots of people shouting timer for me now, thank you. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> we're all organized, we're ready to go. Um, so thank you, Moto Toasty, for, for being with us. I'm assuming that's where the moto comes from now. Now it all makes sense to me with motorbikes and your hobbies. Um, and great picture, by the way, on the beach. Um, really love Australia. I've been a couple of times with Tim going home to visit family. Um, and it's an incredible country out there. If you get a chance to go, go. Highly recommend it. Um, so yeah, good to have you with us. Good to have a couple of Antipodean contestants as well. Um, a couple of Australians here racing with us for this series. Uh, it's really nice to have people from all over the world joining us. I'm assuming it's well past your bedtimes, though, and you're well into Thursday. Robot 58 um, is ready for the start, Mike. But this will be all ready for you to watch when you wake up tomorrow morning. And your last series to find. So, without further ado, start the light sequence, please. Thank you, everyone, for helping me with the timer. You're so kind. <laughs> what would I do without you guys, really? I'd be, I'd be lost. I'd be in a room chatting. Just nothing. Here we go. So, Moto Toasty, away from the line this time. Good start. Oh, slowing down again in the corner. Everyone seems to do that. I think it is a turning thing. Genuinely think it's a turning thing now. I'm, I'm beginning to form my opinions. I'm probably completely wrong. Very similar to Crofty on the F1. I have opinions. They're probably wrong. And here we go. First lap, 18-4. So, consistent times with everybody else. Let's see if they can make consistency for themselves in the next lap. 2.2, a little bit slow into the split, but we can let them off. They've got a good line through the S there. Coming into headbanger corner and out again. We'll see 18.3. Everyone is doing amazingly consistent lap times here. I'm so impressed. We didn't get this consistency with the Yeti Borgs, um, but Swinders being the bestest for consistency, but everyone else is doing really well as well. This is looking really, really good. Uh, let's see, third lap. 18.3. This is this is pretty good consistency. Fastest lap 15.6 tonight, still held by Georges. Um, I don't think this is going to get close to that. I could be wrong. All of a sudden, we could go for the inside line and completely smash it. But I think 
18 points, 5, 6. This is so consistent. Amazing. I'm so impressed with the consistency. I really am. This is looking. This is so good. I'm so excited for racing next week now. I'm so pumped for this. I've got a weekend to get ready and do all my paperwork and actually learn the rules. Because, you know, I should know the rules before we start. 18.45. I advise you all to go and do the same. Read the rules. Um, obviously, you need to know about this stuff more than I do. I can just waffle. You guys have to do this proper. So, coming through the S-Bends. Again, really consistent times here. Looking at maybe tenth, two tenths either side of 18.4. This is looking so consistent. 18.42. Crikey. This is so... Uh, everyone is doing so well with the consistency tonight. I'm really impressed with this. Um, oh, a pirouette. And we've gone backwards. Time is up. And not a moment too soon. All of a sudden, a bit of a funny over the top corner. That'll be on the logs, though, for you. And you can collect that uh, from us. Tim has just arrived behind me, um, lurking, as he does so often behind the microphone I've, with me. I have some information. Right. Uh, Robot 74, uh, which was a non-starter before. Who was 74? Hang on, let me flip the sheets. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Can't just say 74. Uh, Lambda Pi. Lambda P. Lambda P, sorry. Yes. Uh, they uh, uh, have actually uh, submitted some code which has no image processing in it. Ah, yes. So Thomas E. did say that in the chat. Exactly. It's okay. Not, oh, right. Uh, so what we were going to do was just uh, run it for a couple more minutes because uh, you're expecting it to, uh, to run forward for four seconds after... Uh, two minutes had elapsed. Ah. Uh, we didn't see that, so we just thought we'd run that one more time for you, just to see. He said that in the chat. I was going to relay that over the radio. Thought well, that yeah, would be gonna... way too complicated. It probably. Would... So I thought we'd talk about it afterwards <laughs> and run it separately. But seeing as you found I, that now, the, okay. I on the email. There this is. Did you really? You read yeah. your email up there? Well, yes. <laughs> It's very busy. Seriously, very, very busy. <laughs> I've been down here like flapping papers about and making a horrible mess and missing the timer. Meanwhile, you've got time to check your email. George, we might not need your help with the button uh, next week, but Tim clearly has time on his hands. So I will be addressing this afterwards in the meeting. So I uh, think we've yes, so, all done. Thomas is in the, here in the chat right now. Oh, yeah, right. so this is like a, a bonus material this is like the bonus extra blu-ray disc that you get with every movie <laughs> we're gonna run you and just leave you for two minutes and just see how it goes um, so it does for everyone else uh, we are done now we have done everyone uh, we have finished the list of people who we're gonna test tonight we are we are effectively finished and this is like the DVD extras have you gone through your list of missing Ooh, lids no. and things right. like that? right okay look I have another bit of paper um, and here I'm going to go through um, this might sound like I'm doing bingo calling but I am in fact giving out some important information um, we have had quite a lot of entries to Formula Pi so people who've paid up to enter um, but haven't sent us any code uh, we can't run you if you don't send us code we're not just going to run the default code all the time we have to have that bit of back and forth with you guys and actually talk and make sure that you send code. Even if you send the basic code, even if you make no changes, we expect some sort of drop from you over the FTP. We cannot race every, you every unless week. every time we have a deadline, you have to put code in. Uh, that is how we roll. Uh, we have quite a long list of people who have not submitted code. Um, so I'm going to read out the numbers. Feel free to talk amongst yourselves until you hear your number. Um, but people who we haven't received any code from any registration or code okay any reg or code um, we have not received them from numbers 14 24 26 29 37 38 39 41 42 talk amongst yourselves 43 44 45 40 Good news, everyone 34, uh, sorry, 74 did move after a uh, delay of about two and a half minutes. There we go. So that, that is hot off the press. There we go. Number 70 has moved. I thought I'd have time to do this. I didn't, clearly. Uh, the timer has set off. Aaron has done... He's walking around with radio. Has he received the robot? I think he has. Um, so I think... Yep, he is retiring that robot. I was partway through my list. So, uh, Richard Haler calls bingo. 
<laughs> that means you have to give me all your chocolate buttons, sir. Uh, that was the prize for winning bingo. So please send them to uh, Pyborg. Uh, that is, <laughs> I know everyone. I have to do. I have to do this. I know it's bingo, everyone. Um, there is a really good Monty Python bingo sketch. I recommend everybody goes and looks that up. Uh, meanwhile, um, I was at forty-four, wasn't I? Uh, 45, 47, 48, 50, 51, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 60, 61, 63, 64, 65, 68. All of those people, if I've just shouted your number out at high speed, you can use the rewind function on YouTube to <laughs> slow that down, slow-mo it a bit. There's a lot of numbers there. We need your registration forward and we need your code. Yes. To reiterate, we need your code. At a minimum, we need to have some code from you. Whether it is the base library that you upload, if you don't have time to do it by Friday, that's fine. We need to see some code from you. We can't run you until we see some code. Dem's the rules. Uh, you can find the rules for everyone else who wants to know about the rules. They are at formulapie.com forward slash rules. Um, very easy to find. And yeah, we if we don't see code from you, we won't run you. Uh, that is, That is it. Uh, there's Richard Taylor with his chocolate emojis. Still <laughs> jealous. I am really still jealous of your buttons. Um, I'm probably going to have to go and scoff down some chocolate when we finish this. Um, for others, who ha we have received code from you. Um, we also would like your lids back. We would have sent you in the post one of the PCB fiberboard lids. Decorate it. Send it back. Um, put a sticker on it. Draw a silly face. Um, I don't know. Put whatever you want on it put a tiny emoji of a dancing person wherever, wherever you fancy, wherever you feel like, send it back um, we, it really helps us identify you um, it also acts for as you may wonder what the SD card slot for um, is in the lids that lid is for keeping your SD card with your code on when we organise ourselves so having a lid that you've painted back with us helps us organise the code so if you haven't sent back a lid please send back a lid or if you don't want to send back your lid and you just want us to put a Pyborg sticker on, we can do that. Just tell us, and we'll do that. Um, so those people who have raced and, and submitted code, but we need to see a lid from you, that is number 7, number 19, and number 25. Also, I think Team Sky had one of the default house lids um, tonight. 13 and 20 as well. 13 and 20. I see. Yes, 13 and 20 as well. Um, I also saw Team Sky... There was number 70, didn't have, they're not on this list. Oh. They had a default lid as well. Um, but I'm assuming their lid's on the way because they did talk about it in their sheet. Sorry, I'm just talking Sorry. to Tim. Talking amongst yourselves, people. Um, and the last ones, uh, we have our missing logos. So for the spin view, the amazing, wonderful spin view, we need a little picture of you guys just to show how human you are. Um, so please send us your images. And those people are 34 Swinders. I'm sure, pretty sure we've seen, have we seen a picture for Swinders? Maybe, maybe not. You're on my list, Swinders. Uh, number 40, number 46, number 59, and number 71. Uh, we need pictures from you, as well as 7, 19, and 25 that I listed a minute ago. Um, that's the end of my messages. Um, George says we have to send it, but I'm not sure it'll get there by next week. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What's the postage like from Spain? Um, we could come down and pick it up. We, we could come down and pick it up. Well, I'm actually I'm due to go to Barcelona in September, but that's a little bit late, and I'd have to drive to Madrid, which is far away. Um, mm. Spanish. Well, if you're doing the winter series, then I'd be in Barcelona. I could pick it up for you in September. Um, but other than that, that's that's the end of my announcements. Apart from to say, uh, code deadline is Friday. How quick are we getting the logs to people? We are going to try and get the logs out to everybody tonight. Oh, so, so we are staying uh, we here for the long run. on it at the moment. So if there's any uh, donations, Domino's Pizza, I believe, do distribute to this uh, <laughs> unit. So if anybody wants to shout us a Domino's tonight so we can get the logs out to you super pronto, we would well appreciate it. I'm quite hungry now, as I have reiterated several times um, but that's it I guess we will get the logs out to you tonight so check your inboxes if you haven't submitted code submit code I'll say it for about the millionth time send us code we need your code we can't race you without code say it again and we will see you on Monday at 6.30 it's probably I did in this, uh, it's on this Formula Pi website are... thing that you've made it's amazing, isn't it's, it? It's got I've, everything. I've got dates in there. And yeah. All. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to I don't know if I'll hit like 
peak YouTube, but I'm going to put this on the, on the screen page to send to people. So this is where we're at now. We're, we're kind of in this bit, like, before the race dates. But as you can see, Monday the 8th of May. Look, there's a time thing in everything um, that says what time it is in your local place. You can, you can click this and check it on your website. We are running at 6 o'clock, apparently, on there. Is that going to happen, 6 o'clock? I think that makes sense. Um... Unless uh, there is, unless people are thinking that they prefer the 6.30 time, uh, I mean, has anyone said in the chat whether Ooh, they like the window. time or not? Whoop. Let's put the chat back so I can have a look at what people... Um, thank you for the great commentary. You're welcome, Richard. <laughs> Anytime. I've got a bit of a sore throat now. I will be going to find the hall soothers after this. Other throat sweets are available. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm, I've been trying my best tonight. <laughs> an idea for next season. Don't send the Yeti lid out, but ask for an image to print. We could do that. We could do that. Um, it does sort of stop the idea of people decorating it, putting stickers on, uh, you know, painting it, that sort of thing, which a couple of them are... Uh, someone's even 3D printed. Well, that was, that's well, a halo good as I was commenting yeah, earlier exactly. on. 3D printing is um, legit as long as it stays below the profile of the wheels, which theirs does. But yeah, it, it loses that kind of... Um, I don't know, it just loses a bit of Okay, stuff. so we do have 6.30 is better, better twice. Okay, cool. We uh, might we might move. There's Tris. Hi, Tris. The I can good. see you. Um, we might move to 6.30 then, only I because then I can have some dinner. I think we are off going at 6.30. Yeah, I it think It just so makes it a little bit less of a rush for us, and it's probably the same for all of you. But uh, Yeah, this has turned into a bit of a chat now. We've kind of just has. interviewed. Talking of interviews... Um, I have a little bit of a promo. Tim, because he is a, an international jet setter, is he's got his passport ready and he's off to the <laughs> north tomorrow. Um, he's off to the good ship Pimeroni to go and visit the team up there and he will be on Bilge Tank tomorrow. So make sure you're tuning into Bilge Tank tomorrow afternoon on Pimeroni. Go and follow their YouTube channel. I'm sure you already do. Um, but Tim will be in Sheffield. He's got his passport ready. Um, he will be heading north. Um, he'll probably be talking about this. He probably will be talking about Formula Pi. So if you've got any questions and you want to actually ask Tim things directly over the internet to his face rather than just to this omnipotent voice... Um, <laughs> then please get on the bilge tank tomorrow and say hi. Um, I'll be on there as well. Um, George is saying an image is okay and faster. We can discuss all this offline. We don't need to do this on here. We I'm can. tired now. I've been we talking can. for two hours. Yeah. <laughs> as per usual, -stop. any suggestions like this, you can always uh, send us uh, an email. You can always talk to us on the forums. Forums are probably the best place because uh, everyone gets involved then. Um, so, uh, yeah, have a, have a chat in the, the, the Formula Pi forum. It's a big old free-for-all. It is. Right, so on that note, we are going to end for today. So thank you very much. Logs for... will be up shortly. Yes, I can see Aaron is feverishly tip-tapping away on the, the machine in front of us and doing so. You will probably receive some of them very, very quickly because he's uh, on it. I believe Swinders asked a little while Did ago, he? when's the earliest we can upload code for next session? Uh, I believe uh, you're going to put the logs on now, so obviously you... Uh, you can grab them uh, fairly much straight away. Uh, is there any problem with them submitting code now, or will it None be a problem with? None well, there you go. Okay, so as soon straight as away. as soon as you get uh, the logs, you can submit code for the next session. I don't know if you meant Swinder's session or um, race. Uh, the next test session won't be till the intermediate uh, gap um, in between. But we'll we'll sort this out. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I'm just going to finish the stream now because I'm tired. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fa like rapidly fading. Has that been on it for an hour? Two hours and 20 minutes I've been chatting away nearly. Yeah, it's probably time to go. Isn't it? Hang on. How long have I been doing it? Nearly two hours. Okay, yeah. I, so it's my bedtime now. Thank I'm, you, everyone. I'm definitely at my bedtime. So, yeah, thank you from all of us. Um, we will speak to you all. Well, I will speak to you all next Monday. Uh, f you know, follow us in the usual places, at pi underscore borg on Twitter and at formula pi underscore... I've been Claire Pollard. I'm at the Tufty on Twitter. Um, follow me if you want to hear about cats or bikes or occasionally software development. And amongst other things, this as well, probably. Um, so, bilge tank tomorrow for Tim. I'm going down for a lie down. And Aaron is going to tip tap away feverishly into the night. So we will speak to you soon. Take it easy, everyone. Thank you for the chat tonight. And uh, see you next week. Bye. Bye.